Here we're going to be looking at secured borrowing or assigning accounts receivable as collateral here for a loan. So for example here we're going to have Corp A wants to borrow money here from Bank B here, but Bank B will borrow them the money providing Corporation A assigns their accounts receivable or guarantees this loan payment with the accounts receivable that they're going to collect. So let's go and look at what we're talking about here. So Bank B, the creditor, requires Corporation A, the debtor here, to designate, designate or assign or pledge uh, receivables as collateral uh, as collateral here on a security for a loan. So if the loan is not paid when it's due here, Bank B, the creditor, can convert these receivables or the collateral to cash uh, collected on these receivables. So let's look at our example here. Corporation A, the debtor, provides or assigns $350,000 of its accounts receivable to Bank B, the creditor, as collateral for a $250,000 note that they're going to um, exchange here. So Corporation A continues to collect the accounts receivable and the account debtors aren't notified of this arrangement. But Bank B assesses a finance charge here of 1% of the accounts receivable and interest on the note here of 12% per year on that they're going to have a corporation A is going to have to pay on this note here to bank B. Now corporation A makes monthly payments to bank B for all the cash it collects on these receivables. So let's go look at our example here. Corporation A is going to issue a notes payable here to bank B for $250,000. So uh, corporation A records this as a credit to their notes payable and bank B records this as a debit here to notes receivable. So let's look at what was exchanged here. Bank B actually pays uh, Corporation A $246,500. So they'd reduce their cash account here, Bank B, by $246,500 versus uh, uh, Corporation A here debiting or increasing their cash here for $246,500. Now you note here that the note or the loan was for $250,000, but there's a finance charge here that Bank B requires here. So let's just go down and look at that here, so how we'd record that here. So uh, there's a $350,000 worth of us assigned receivables here times this 1% finance charge. So uh, Corporation A records it as a finance expense here. They debit or increased their finance expense for $3,500 or 1% of their $1,000 worth of accounts receivable. And then Bank B records it as a finance revenue here, or credits their finance revenue here for $3,500. Okay, we've taken care of this loan here and the cash that Corporation A would receive on it. Now let's look at how we pay off this loan here, this notes payable. Now for, for the first month or during the first month here, uh, Corporation A collects $217,000 thousand dollars worth of accounts receivable. So let's look at how we dis how this assignment works here. We have three hundred and fifty thousand dollars that was assigned but they collected uh, two hundred and seventeen thousand dollars. But we're actually going to reduce this uh, uh, assignment here by two hundred and twenty seven thousand dollars. It's a small technical matter here but uh, the reason we have that is there was a, a sale for returns and allowance of seven thousand dollars on this for the month here and there is also some discounts of three thousand dollars so those those amounts here would be included in this or reduce this assignment here but let's go back and look at this two hundred and seventeen thousand dollars worth of cash that they received here on the receivables well we have to pay off this note here so we would reduce our cash here for corporation a here by two hundred seventeen thousand dollars and then pay it here to bank b here for two hundred and seventeen thousand so bank b would increase their cash account here or debit it for two hundred and seventeen thousand dollars and then if we go up here and look at our notes payable that would have uh, for Corporation A that would have been reduced here by that cash amount for two hundred and seventeen thousand dollars and Bank B would reduce their uh, notes receivable here by two hundred and seventeen thousand dollars. Now let's go down here and there we have one more um, expense item here or cash that has to be paid here. Now this this two hundred and seventeen thousand dollars that would have been paid on the beginning of the beginning of the next month here. So we received the 217000 during the previous month and then at the beginning of the first of the next month we paid it here. But going back to this $2,500 here, now that's for an 
interest expense on this notes payable. So let's go down and look at that here. So um, we have interest expense. Now that's based on the balance of the notes payable that's outstanding. So for that first month, there was 250,000 outstanding. There's a 12% interest rate per year times 1 12th or one month gives us $2,500 here. Interest expense for Corporation A, they would debit that and then, uh, and then Corp uh, Bank B would uh, credit or increase their interest revenue here by $2,500. All right, so we've taken care of our first month here. Now we step into our second month where uh, Corporation A collects $122,000 cash on the receivables that's outstanding here. So let's just go over to our assignment here. Well, they had 123,000 here to assign, but they collected here 122,000 dollars. So we've essentially taken care of our assignment through that collection here. But 122,000, uh, we have uh, 100, uh, 1,000 dollars worth of uncollectible accounts receivable that are written off here. So let's look at how we'd pay off this note here. Collect 122,000 dollars. So during the month, the second month here. So at the beginning or of the next month here, we actually pay uh, bank B here $33,000 here of the $122,000. That's because we had $250,000 note here and we previously paid off $217,000. So we're sitting here with $33,000 balance that we have to pay to bank B here or Corporation A has to pay to bank B here in this note here. So we uh, cor uh, Corp A reduces their cash account here for $33,000 and Bank B increases or debits their cash here for $33,000. Now let's go up and look at our notes payable and notes receivable. So here uh, Corporation A would have reduced their notes payable here by that balancing amount here of $33,000. So notes payable is paid off here and then Bank B would have reduced their notes receivable here by $33,000. So that is paid off. So the notes receivable and the notes payable here have been paid off based on the assignment of those accounts receivable. And then going back here to our cash account again. Here we've got another $300 uh, that was reduced uh, by the cash amount here by Corporation A and increased here or received this cash here by the Bank B here. So uh, that was again for the balance of the interest uh, interest expense here. So we had that $250,000 amount that was reduced here by $217,000 payment for that first month and then for the second month here that we'd have a remainder of $33,000 sitting in our notes payables and again taking the $33,000 balance times 12% interest per year times one month here one twelfth of a year gives us $300 worth of interest expense here uh, for Corporation A we would debit that interest and in keys it here by $300 and then uh, Bank B would credit or increase their interest revenue here by $300. Now that was on that is balance of the of notes payable interest expense that was due on it. So going up to our cash account here, you can see we just we reduced our cash here by $300 and then for Corporation A and then for the Bank B they increased their cash account here for $300. So if we total up everything here for the uh, paying off those that notes receivable and those, our notes payable here by uh, Corporation A here and recording this notes receivable here by uh, Bank B here what was included a total amount was $252,800 was credited here for cash by Corporation A and then uh, debit or, or, incorporate, or the bank B would have debit or increased their cash here by $252,800. And you can see here that first amount here was for the first payment that was made on that notes based on the assigned accounts receivable here of $217,000. Then we had that interest expense on the outstanding notes our notes payable that was outstanding here and well the 217,000 that was for the notes payable here that was reduced here and then an interest expense here of $225,000 on that outstanding balance and notes payable for the first month and then we had the other $33,000 remaining on the notes payable that had to be paid off and then the interest expense here was for the balance of the, on that notes payable here of 30 uh, $33,000 times 12% for one month, which equals $300. So that's how we take care of uh, this secured boring where we assign our uh, we assign our accounts receivable or we have to pay off a note or a loan here based on 
our accounts receivable that are outstanding. So as we receive these accounts receivable, whatever the agreement of the uh, loan is, we'd have to pay it against the uh, note, or excuse me, when we assign our notes payable here, we'd have to pay it off against any of the accounts receivable that are outstanding here. And depending on what the contract is, in this case, we were just paying it off month by month. Whatever we collected for the previous month here, we'd play off in the beginning of the next month here until this note was paid off. So you can see here, we come down here with a notes payable. There were two payments that were made here. And then for our notes receivable, there were two payments that were received here until we have a zero balance here between Corporation A and Bank B.